Welcome in this section about the iOS application structure. To explain the iOS application structure, let's start with the so-called IPA file, which stands for iOS Package Archive. And as the name Archive already says, it is a zip file, you can say. So you can rename it to zip and then you can extract the contents. And it's also the result of a build. So if you're a developer and you build your iOS app, so for example, the Swift code, then the compiled code will be put in this IPA Archive. And this file you can also upload to the App Store. So if you have a jailbroken device you can directly install it with some tools and else it needs to be published with the correct certificate and everything to the app store but if we go over the contents there's always a payload folder which contains the so-called app bundle the app bundle is a directory which ends with the name dot app or you can say it's a kind of a packet but basically it's just a directory with all the resources which are needed by ios to run the application some of the resources are just raw files not compiled like the app icon image you can see first the png file then there is a compiled assets catalog file which is always there the assets.car file and then there can be different localized resource folders which end with l project in this case so there is a base.l project but usually there are also localized files so for example english friends etc so for different languages and within those resources folders there can be for example storyboard files it's not always the case depends on what kind of user interface you're using but those storyboard files are related to the user interface of the app and also a very important file is the so-called plist file so within this subdirectories there can be an info.plist and also in the root directory there is an info.plist file and if you're using Xcode, as you can see in this screenshot, you can also specify those properties for different assets and on different levels. And that will reflect in those different info.plist files. Let's continue. So next to those localized resource folders, there's always a binary, an executable to run the application with the same name of the... So in this case, the Gotham times lab we picked as an example is also the name of the executable the binary and optional there can be a frameworks folder if the app is using external frameworks or frameworks part of the apple sdk then those are put in this frameworks directory then there is a package info file which just contains one string which is a four byte package signature followed by a four byte app signature and always there is a code signature folder which contains one file which is a code resources file which is in xml format and contains contains all the files of this package with a hash for each file and there could be an embedded mobile provision file which contains some information about the permissions of the app and about the provisioning profile the provisioning profile is linked to the apple developer who built this app you can also get some information about the author of the app which is registered within apple the same thing i can quickly show you on the file system so if you're using a mac device then this ipa file is recognized and you can even install it but this custom app is not really compatible or it's not trusted by my macbook and what we can do we can just rename this file to zip then just extract the contents then we have this payload directory within those payload directory there is an app bundle then we can do show package contents and then we get the similar contents we already saw so some of those contents can be readable if you open them with a text editor like this code resources file which is just an xml file with the signatures of each file within this directory some of those files are not really readable with a text editor but if you're on a macbook and you have tools like xcode you can also open the plist file and then you can also read all the properties so this is in short the structure of an app and if you're using a lab device and mobile hacking lab we already explained to you that there are app sandboxes or containers for all the different installed apps and the same directory structure is also visible on the device so for example the same directory with the same app installed so the same files you can find on the device and for example it also shows you that this is the binary which can be executed and some of those files might be directly readable and some of them might be decoded before you can really read them so this is in short the application structure then we can go over a few details so for example we saw some of those localized assets the storyboard this is one of the user interface components so from a developer perspective you can pick for the storyboard option which is already a little bit deprecated or you can use the swift user interface so in this picture you can see it from a developer perspective as a developer you can for example just drag and drop buttons input fields etc and then that will be saved as a storyboard files then we can dive a little bit deeper into the frameworks directory so as a developer you can use 
use the default framework, so it's a part of the iOS SDK, or you can use external frameworks. So this is how it looks like if you develop the app. And another thing you can do, but we will dive into this later in the tooling section, is that you can also copy the complete application directory from an app. For example, if you have SSH access, then you can also use. So in this case, I copied the default podcast app on the iOS device, and this app also has a frameworks directory. And here you can see this podcast app uses different frameworks. So this is just an example. Then we have the resources and assets. I think you already saw this app icon. So as a developer, you can also add app icons. Those will also be reflected in the app directory and entitlements. Is very important so as a developer you can specify which entitlements are needed for example location can be one push notifications etc those entitlements will be reflected in the info.plist file and another optional component from an app is an app extension so this is not a framework you use but it's more like a mini app you include in your app and there is one additional thing i would like you to show so we looked into how can you extract an iba package file but now also the other way around as a developer how can you create an IPA file in a little bit of a hacky way, you can say. So I created this WebKit demo app and now I want to build it. So I can do product build, build succeeded. And then there is one other option, which is show build folder in Finder. Then we get this build folder. Within this build folder, there's products. Then I build it for a debug version for the iPhone simulator. So let's check this folder. And then there is a WebKit demo, which is an app file. So what we can do now, we can create a new folder called payload. Then we add this app directory inside the payload folder. Then the only thing we need to do is compress payload and then call it webkit demo.ipa. Yes, use IPA. This is already sufficient to be installed on a device. Let's see if it really works. So let's check if we can really install this app. App installed on a device. 